Last lesson on supply and demand learning target 505. I can show and explain what happens to the equilibrium price and quantity of a product when demand and or supply changes. This is our essential learning target, and it gets into why the prices of goods change. If you see that the price of gas has gone up, what it could have caused that exactly. And in short, it's either going to be um, because of a change in the demand for the product or a change in supply of a product. I'm going to go through three examples. Our first example concerns the wine market. You can see our generic graph there at the left and everything is completely labeled. You have the axes labeled y-axis P for price, x-axis Q for quantity, and our equilibrium starting price P1, our equilibrium starting quantity Q1. That's important to have in there. The problem says show and explain what happens to the equilibrium price and quantity of wine, ceteris paribus, if the Surgeon General declares that drinking wine is good for your heart. So in these problems, either supply is going to change or demand is going to change. If one thing happens to spur a change, either supply or demand is going to change. It's never going to be both. Sometimes two things might happen where you have to shift both curves. But if one thing is changing, then it's either going to change supply or demand, never both. The problem says show and explain. Show means graph. Explain means answer the question and give a reason or explanation for, for the answer. So here, Surgeon General declares that drinking wine is good for your heart. With this, demand is going to change. Ask yourself who's going to react most directly or who's going to react first because of whatever it is the problem says. And if the Surgeon General declares that drinking wine is good for your heart, the consumers of wine are going to react. And they're going to want to perhaps buy and drink more wine. So here, the demand for wine has gone up. Now, it's a demand for wine. It's a shift of the entire curve. The price of wine hasn't changed. There's some reason other than uh, the price of wine changing that consumers now want to buy more wine. That's an increase in demand, and you can just uh, symbolize with the D and the up arrow. So showing in our graph, shift of the demand curve to the right, our new demand curve labeled D2. Now, with an increase in that demand curve, we have a brand new equilibrium. And with an increase in demand, that's going to cause the equilibrium price of wine to change and the equilibrium quantity of wine to change. Let's see exactly how it changes. Does it increase or decrease? Well, our original equilibrium was there at P1 and Q1. Q1. Now, with our increase in demand, we have a brand new equilibrium there. Let's look at price. Is the price higher or lower? than what it was before, it's higher. Label it P2. So an increase in the demand for a product, all else being equal, ceteris paribus, is going to lead to an increase in the price of a product. And that probably makes intuitive sense to you. More demand for a product, the price is going to go up. Now on the quantity side, brand new equilibrium quantity at Q2, that's both quantity supplied and quantity demand to remember in equilibrium. Is that higher or lower than before? It's an increase. It's to the right of the original. So an increase in the demand for a product is going to cause the equilibrium quantity of the product to go up. More wine is going to be made, and more wine is going to be bought and sold. We have a movement along the supply curve. We don't have a shift in the supply curve here. We have a movement along the supply curve. Now, the way to read my explanation here, which you can do, whenever you see explain, you don't have to write it out. You can just symbolize. An increase in the demand for wine is going to lead to or cause the equilibrium price to increase and the equilibrium quantity to increase. Showing means graphing, just a reminder there. And explaining means give the reason. So uh, why does price go up? Price goes up because the demand for wine went up. You don't have to offer any more of an explanation than that. Let's look at our next example. And here it's the orange juice market. And the problem says, show and explain what happens to the equilibrium price and quantity of orange juice if there's an unusual freeze in Florida. So it's either going to cause the supply of orange juice to change or the demand for orange juice to change. With the unusual freeze in Florida, who is that going to affect most directly or first? Is it going to be the suppliers, uh, the, the businesses, the makers of orange juice, or is it going to be the consumers of orange juice? And an unusual freeze in Florida, the supply of oranges 
is going to go down and oranges are an input to orange juice so we can assume that the supply of orange juice is also going to go down. So the supply of orange juice is going to go down. Show that by a shift of this curve to the left. And a decrease in the supply of orange juice is going to lead to a price change for orange juice and a quantity change for orange juice. Our original equilibrium point was there at P1 and Q1. Our brand new equilibrium point is here. Concerning price, does it increase or decrease when the supply of a good goes down? You can see that P2, our new equilibrium price, is higher than P1. So a decrease in the supply of a product is going to cause the price of the product to go up. If there's less of something overall, then the price is higher. If something's more rare or more scarce, then the price generally tends to be higher. On the quantity side, brand new equilibrium quantity at Q2, that's to the left of Q1, less than before. So a decrease in the supply of orange juice is going to cause the equilibrium uh, quantity to go down. So our explanation, decrease in supply is going to lead to an increase in the price of orange juice and a decrease in the equilibrium quantity of orange juice. Third example, and in this example, both supply and demand are going to change. But two things are happening. Show and explain what happens to the price and quantity of gas. If at the same time a new light rail system is implemented, oil refineries are improved, making oil cheaper. So let's take it piece by piece. Uh, a new light rail system is implemented. How might that affect the gas market? Well, if a new light rail system is implemented, maybe we could assume that people who used to drive are now going to take the new light rail system for transport using less gas. So perhaps the demand for gas goes down. And we're going to shift the demand curve to the left. Now, if only that changed, if only demand went down, the price of gas would go down and the quantity of gas would go down. But at the same time that happened, oil refineries are improved, making oil cheaper. Oil cheaper and input to gas, cheaper input costs, that's going to cause the supply of gas to go up. Shifting the supply curve to the right. Now look at the intersection of the new supply curve S2 and the original demand curve D1. You can see that if only the supply of the product went up, then the price would go down and the quantity would go up. But our brand new equilibrium point here is going to be at S2 and D2. So our original is there at S1 and D1, and now our brand new equilibrium point is at S2 and D2. And we want to figure out, all right, with these two changes, what's going to happen to the equilibrium price of gas and what's going to happen to the equilibrium quantity of gas. Well, let's look at price first. If just demand decreased, price would go down. If just supply increased, price would go down. So if both happen, then we can say price is going to go down, our new equilibrium point at P2. So when demand decreases and supply increases, price goes down. Now let's look at quantity. And if just demand decreased, quantity would go down. If just supply increased, quantity would go up. So th those are two opposing forces. How do we know exactly what's going to happen to the equilibrium quantity of gas with these two changes? You can see at the new equilibrium quantity Q2, the way I drew it, it looks like quantity went down a little. But that's only because of the amount I shifted the curves. I shifted the demand curve a little bit more to the left than I shifted the supply curve to the right. But this is just a theoretical example. We don't know exactly the weight of the demand change or the weight of the supply change. Maybe supply changes by a little and demand changes by a lot. So in, in reality, quantity does go down. But in this problem, in this theoretical example, we don't know. So the best answer, the correct answer here, 
is indeterminate. We cannot determine what happens to the equilibrium quantity of gas. It doesn't stay the same. We don't know that it stays the same, so don't say that even though it kind of looks like it does. Whenever both demand and supply change, either price or quantity is going to be indeterminate. So when you do your graph, whichever one looks like it kind of stayed the same, that's the one that's indeterminate. Now you try, pause the video, answer this question, draw out the graph, make sure you both show and explain what would happen to the price and quantity of bread if the price of wheat, a factor used to make bread, decreased. All right, so here's our bread market. Hopefully you started out your example exactly like this, uh, although this time you notice that I, I put a little curve into the curves, and that's fine. You can do it like this, or you can draw straight lines as I've had it before. We have our starting equilibrium price P1, our starting equilibrium quantity Q1, and here the price of wheat, a factor used to make bread, decreased. So that's an input cost factor, factor of production. So input costs go down for bread. What's going to happen? Supply is going to go up. Increase in supply, shift the curve to the right. And our brand new curve labeled S2. An increase in supply is going to cause the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity of bread to change. How so? Well, at our brand new equilibrium point at S2 and D1, you can see that price is lower than before. So an increase in the supply of bread is going to cause the price of bread to go down. On the quantity side, quantity Q2, higher than before. An increase in the supply of bread, all else remaining equal, is going to cause the equilibrium quantity of bread to go up.